Good morning, ESM. I'm Michael Rich, and today we're talking about the Game Awards, but more of that after news. An individual from California has been confirmed to be the first Omicron variant case in the U.S., according to Dr. Anthony Fauci. This individual was a traveler and had just returned from a trip to South Africa on November 22nd. This person, while vaccinated, had not yet received the booster shot. In response, Fauci stated, We knew that it was just a matter of time before the first case of Omicron would be detected in the United States. However, the person is making a recovery and none of the people who were around them have tested positive. The 15-year-old suspect of the Michigan school shooting was charged as an adult in Michigan court on charges of terrorism and four counts of first-degree murder. He was also charged with seven counts of assault and intent to murder and 12 counts of possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony. There were also two videos where the shooter talked about shooting up the school and killing people. In addition, there was a journal where he wrote in detail about his desire to shoot up the school. The Everson Museum holds their annual Festival of Light, Trees and Lights from December 4th through the 14th during museum hours. The event includes performances, film showings, interactive art activities, an art market, refreshments, and of course the main display of grandly decorated trees. Tickets are $10 for adults and $5 for children. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. ESM's Got Talent will take place on Friday, December 10th in the high school auditorium. The event is a class of 2023 fundraiser. Pre-sale tickets will take place before school starting on Monday, December 6th through December 9th. Ticker, tickets will be sold $5 pre-sale and $8 at, door, at the door. Don't miss out on the opportunity to support the class of 2023 and watch your classmates perform. It's that time of year, the annual Code Alone dance coming up on December 4th. The dance will take place in the large gym from 7 to 10. Tickets will be sold all week leading up to the dance. Tickets will not be sold at the door. You will need proof of vaccination or a negative COVID test. Tests will not be provided at school. Pre-request songs by scanning the QR code on screen or by going to tjdj.syr on Instagram and clicking the link in the bio. So, the Game Awards, what is it? Well, it's basically the Grammys or the Oscars, but it's for video games. There's about 30 categories, but let's be honest, who cares about half of them? So let's cut to the chase, after weather. Today we'll have a high of 50 degrees and a low of 32. There's a 70% chance of rain all day with the snow overnight. Friday it will be partly cloudy with a high of 35 and a low of 30 degrees. Saturday has a 40% chance of rain and a high of 41 degrees with a low of 27. And I'm Paige with your weather. We're looking at the Game Award nominees. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! Best multiplayer, we have Back for Blood, Knockout City, It Takes Two, Monster Hunter Rise, New World, and Valheim. Best esports game, we have Call of Duty, Counter Strike Global Offensive, Dota 2, League of Legends, and Valorant. For best score in music, we have The Arts Will Escape, Cyberpunk 2077, Deathloop, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, and then Near Replica. Version 1224744871139. Okay, for games with impact, we have Before Your Eyes, 
Boyfriend, boy, <laughs> boyfriend dungeon. Chikori, a colorful tale. Life is strange, true colors, and no longer home. For best content creator of the year, we have we have Dream. That's what the mask is. Usually, Gwals. I B A I. Reg. Grivj. Grivj. Grevj. Grevj. I think he's Spanish. <laughs> Our final two categories are best indie and game of the year. We're gonna start off with best indie. Our nominees for best indie game of the year are. Twelve Minutes by Louis Antonid and Anna Berna. Death's Door by Devolver Digital. Encryption by Devolver Digital. And a Bridge of Spirits by Ember Lab. And Loop Hero by Devolver Digital. And what you've all been waiting for. Game of the Year! Our nominees are Deathloop, It Takes Two, Metroid Dread, Psychonauts 2, Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, and Resident Evil Village. But let's be honest, the real game of the year is... Race with Ryan on all platforms, let's go baby. The MLB has implemented a lockdown until new CBA negotiations with the Player Association are agreed upon. Until a new CBA is agreed upon, there will be no signings of free agents and nego no negotiations and no trades also. This is the MLB's first lockdown since 1994. The Syracuse women's basketball team upset the 18th ranked Ohio State Wednesday night in the ACC Big Ten Challenge, 97-91. The leading scorer for the Orange was Tisha Hyman with 30 points on the night. The girls volleyball team beat Camden with three consecutive sets. This marks Coach Felicia's 100th win as a, as a coach. Congratulations. The boys and girls track team had their first meet yesterday. The boys' team finished 4th overall, and the girls' team finished 9th overall. The boys' team was led by Michael Parks, who placed 1st in the 55-meter hurdles, breaking the school record with 7.65 seconds. Michael Parks also came in 1st in long jump and high jump. Rocky L also led the boys' team, coming in 2nd in the 55-meter hurdles, 1st in triple jump, and 1st in the 55-meter dash. The boys 4x4 relay team got 4th with runners Luke Mancini, Dan Tovar, Aiden O'Brien, and Caleb Bird. Mancini also came in 5th overall in triple jump. The girls team was led by Rhiannon Butchko, coming in 1st in high jump, Caleb Maloof in 4th in the 55 meter hurdles, and Caleb Maloof also in 5th in triple jump. In upcoming games, the wrestling team has a home match against FM today at 6pm. And I'm John with your sports. A few weeks back, we shared that alum Zach Warden was in the running for Game Informer Magazine's Last Gamer Standing competition. It's an online vote which the winner receives $25,000 in a two-page spread in an issue of Game Informer. It also serves as a fundraiser to benefit Starlight Children's Foundation, which provides games and consoles to children's hospitals. With 11 hours remaining, Zach is in first place. If you feel like voting, please help Zach out.